Hello, my name is Ren, and today we're going to do a short tutorial on inputs and how those inputs can be used within our characters to control actions and movement. The way we set these inputs up are inside the project settings. So if you go to the top tab, you've got this little cog, you click project settings. On the left hand side, under engine, is an input panel. So if we go to this input panel, we'll see our various action and axis mappings. Now, actions can be thought of as one-off actions that are called within the engine when you press a key or release a key. And axis mappings can be thought of as constant values that are being relayed with a scale based on which keys are being pressed. And if no keys are being pressed, the scale will be equal to zero. So in this instance here, move right is calling negative one when you press A, which means it's the negative of right, so we'll move left. And when we're pressing D, it's a positive input. So we'll be moving to the right. And we use those within our characters. So in our character here, we call the move right input. And then we compare the float to find out which way we're moving. And if it's positive, we're moving right. If it's negative, we're moving left. And then we use the axis value to power the movement input in a certain axis direction. And just up here, we can see our action mapping for jump. And we can see that when it's pressed, it calls jump once. And when it's released, it calls stop jumping once. So these are one-off shots which happen as soon as they're pressed and axes are always being relayed and if it's equal to zero we're neither moving left nor right so we don't add any movement input. So that's how we use inputs within our graph. And the reason that we can control this character and use these inputs is because this character is being controlled by what's called our player controller. Now you can think of the player controller as us as a player, as soon as we press keys they get relayed to whichever actor is being controlled by the player. So at the moment that will be this character. And we can show this by dragging another character into the world. So once we've dragged that other character into our world you can see that he's just stood there. And he's not taking any input from our player. Now if I were to stop the game and on this little character here, go to his details panel. If I scroll down to our pawn, this is where our character can get controlled. So the pawn class, which you can create inside the content browser, by right clicking, creating a blueprint class, and creating a pawn, this pawn is the default class that can be possessed and receive input from a controller. Characters extend pawns and have extra abilities like the ability to walk, they've also got capsule colliders, which is used for physics and movement around the world. And they've also got default meshes inside them. And what we've been doing is going down to all classes and using paper character, which is an extension of character. You can see the hierarchy just here. Back in our settings for this character that we've pulled in, if we go to our pawn options, which are the extended options of our character, you'll see auto possess player. So if I auto possess player zero, we'll now possess that one player. So that's because he's taking input. We've had a look at the different actors that can take input from a controller. So these include the pawn, the character, and the paper character, which can be found in all classes. The next thing that I wanted to cover is how you constrain the movement of a character in a certain axis. So if we open the character and we're in the viewport, on the top left, you'll see the options for the default character if you click that base class. On the right hand side, you'll see all the details. The one we're interested in is this pawn class drop down and you'll see the use controller rotations. So we're only using rotation in the yaw and the reason for this is so that our character can flip which direction the entire character is facing based on our inputs. So we're rotating the controller 180 degrees here with these set control rotations based off the velocity. So if he's moving to the left, we'll be at zero degrees. If we're moving to the right, we'll move 180 degrees. And we can do this through the set control rotation, which if we look back at the top left on those details, this pawn or character is inheriting those your controls from the controller. And if you remember, the controller is us as a player delivering inputs to pawns or characters that we're currently possessing. So the next place where we can manage which planes are being constrained is in the character movement component. One of the things to note here is the gravity scale. For a 2D side scroller, we're using full gravity, so we fall downwards in the world. We're also using this walking mode of movement. 
we can control how fast our character moves inside these defaults for walking just here. We'll see these little drop down arrows on most of these option boxes which give us additional options in case we need to change them. At the very bottom of this character movement component we'll see planar movement. We're constraining to a plane in the Y axis which you can change in this drop down here. And the reason we're doing that in the Y axis is so that our character doesn't move backwards on his 2D plane and can only move in his other two axes. Now if we quickly swap over to our top down game and look at the character here we'll notice in the character movement that gravity is set to zero. And the reason for this is so that our character doesn't fall downwards through our tile map. The other thing you'll notice is that the default land movement mode is set to flying and the reason for this is so that we don't need to use all these complex options we can just scroll down to character movement flying and change these two simple settings for how fast he moves and how fast he stops with max fly speed and braking speed. And the last thing to do is check which planes he is constrained to. You'll notice in the planar movement drop down that we're still constraining to a plane but this time we're constraining to the z-axis and this means that when our capsule component on our character collides with objects in the world he won't move up or down so that's it for this session, we've covered inputs and how they're used inside our characters, how characters are controlled using the control rotations and constraint to plane options, and what types of characters can take input, like the pawn, the character class, and the paper 2D class. So we'll see you next time on the next bite-sized session.